Observers have noted that SpaceX has completed a new static fire test on its newest prototype of the Super Heavy rocket. Super Heavy is the latest and greatest in the company's new line of rockets that will form the backbone of humanity's journey to Mars. Let's take a closer look. SpaceX was founded by Elon Musk, a South African-born businessman and entrepreneur. At age 30, Musk made his initial fortune by selling his two successful companies, Zip2, which he sold for $307 million in 1999, and PayPal, which eBay purchased for $1.5 billion in 2002. Musk decided his next major venture would be a privately funded space company. Initially, Musk had the idea of sending a greenhouse, dubbed the Mars Oasis, to the Red Planet. His goal was to drum up public interest in exploration, while also providing a scientific base on Mars. But the cost ended up being too high, and instead, Musk started a spaceflight company called Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, or SpaceX, now based in the Los Angeles suburb of Hawthorne, California. He spent a third of his reported fortune, $100 million, to get SpaceX going. There was skepticism that he would be successful, which persisted into SpaceX's first years. After spending 18 months toiling privately on a spacecraft, SpaceX unveiled the craft in 2006 under the name Dragon. Musk was already an experienced businessman when he started SpaceX, and he strongly believed that more frequent and reliable launches would bring down the cost of exploration. So he sought out a stable customer that could fund the early development of a rocket, NASA. His goal for SpaceX was to develop the first privately built, liquid-fueled booster to make it into orbit, which he called the Falcon 1. The company experienced a steep learning curve on the road to orbit. It took four tries to get Falcon 1 flying successfully, with previous attempts derailed by problems such as fuel leaks and a rocket stage collision. But eventually, Falcon 1 made two successful flights on September 28, 2008 and July 14, 2009. The 2009 launch also placed the Malaysian Razak Sat satellite into orbit. In 2006, SpaceX received $278 million from NASA under the agency's Commercial Orbital Transportation Services Demonstration Program, which was created to spur the development of systems that could transport cargo commercially to the ISS. The addition of a few more milestones eventually boosted the total contract value up to $396 million. SpaceX was selected for the program along with rocket plane Kistler, but RPK's contract was terminated with only partial payment after the company failed to meet the required milestones. Multiple companies participated in the COTS program in its early stages in funded or unfunded contracts. In 2008, NASA awarded two contracts for commercial resupply services. SpaceX received a contract for 12 flights, and Orbital Sciences Corporation received a contract for eight flights. The workhorse rocket of the SpaceX fleet is the Falcon 9, and one of its features is reusability. Falcon 9 has much more cargo than Falcon 1 at around 28,991 pounds to low Earth orbit, compared to Falcon 1's capacity of 1,480 pounds. The first Falcon 9 booster landing took place on December 21, 2015, and SpaceX now strives to make its boosters retrievable as a matter of course. They generally land on a robotic drone ship near the launch pad. Many of the Falcon 9 boosters have been used multiple times to reduce launching costs. A more powerful rocket, known as Falcon Heavy, made its debut on February 6, 2018, meeting almost all of its major milestones. Falcon Heavy successfully flew to orbit, carrying a Tesla Roadster and a space-suited mannequin nicknamed Starman. SpaceX ran a live stream of the launch in the Roadster's first few hours in space, which attracted attention from all over the world. The two rocket boosters landed successfully near Kennedy Space Center, as expected, but the core stage hit the ocean at 300 miles per hour, which was too fast, and it didn't survive the impact. Falcon Heavy then performed an engine burn in space that is expected to bring the Roadster at least as far as Mars. Mars's orbit. April 2019 saw a setback for SpaceX when a test of the Crew Dragon spacecraft, intended to bring NASA astronauts to space, experienced a malfunction while on the ground. This created a smoke plume visible for miles around Cape Canaveral, Florida. The incident set back the company's timeline for bringing people to the International Space Station. That said, the company has recovered and has been bringing people to orbit with few issues since the debut crewed mission in 2020. The next and most crucial milestone for SpaceX was space station delivery. 
Dragon, riding a Falcon 9 rocket, delivered its first cargo to the space station in May 2012 under a test flight for the COTS program. The launch was delayed for a few days because of an engine problem, but the rocket lifted off safely on the next try. Space flight observers committed SpaceX's ability to send a cargo spacecraft to the ISS. Private space flight hadn't even been considered when the space station was developed in the 1980s and 1990s. SpaceX fulfilled the first of its regular commercial flights to the space station in October 2012. That flight achieved most of its objectives, but it experienced a partial rocket failure during launch. The failure ended up stranding a satellite, Orbcom OG2, in an abnormally low orbit, which led to the mission's failure. A new version of Dragon's cargo variant began flying in December 2020 and has executed all five of its planned missions successfully to date. With such lofty plans for the future, a lot depends on the performance of the Raptor engines, which are at the core of every new rocket used by SpaceX. The company makes regular upgrades to the engine to improve its efficiency and reusability. In recent months, SpaceX has used two variants of the engine, with the newer one dubbed Raptor 2. The company states Raptor 2 includes a large number of performance and reliability improvements over the previous iteration. The Raptor engine is a full-flow, staged combustion cycle engine that runs on super-chilled liquid oxygen and super-chilled liquid methane, both of which will power SpaceX's next-generation vehicle, Starship. The Raptor engine benefits from the highly advantageous FFSCC cycle, maximizing the impulse generated by a given amount of propellant. It is the third FFSCC engine to ever be developed and the first to leave the test stand. The first stage of Starship, called Super Heavy, will be jam-packed with 33 Raptor engines, 20 non-gimbling Raptor engines in the outermost ring, 10 gimbling engines in the middle ring, and 3 gimbling central engines in the innermost ring. This number is expected to decrease in the future as SpaceX further upgrades Raptor. The second stage, Starship, currently hosts six total engines, three vacuum-optimized non-gimbling engines, and three sea-level gimbling engines. Elon Musk has noted that in the future, the ship is likely to gain three more vacuum-optimized engines once they increase the length of the ship. Raptor is constructed from SpaceX's proprietary SX500 alloy, copper, aluminum, and steel alloys. There is no information to suggest that these have significantly changed between Raptor 1 and Raptor 2. The engine relies on a small amount of 3D printing. However, SpaceX is trying to remove as much 3D printing as possible due to the inability to scale, high cost, and low manufacturing rate. One of Raptor's most impressive specs is its gimbling range. The engine can gimbal 15 degrees on the Y and Z axes, which is needed for the flip and burn landing that Starship does. A gimbal range of 15 degrees is a lot. For comparison, the RS-25 gimbals to 12.5 degrees and the SpaceX Merlin engine gimbals to 5 degrees on the first stage. At the beginning of 2022, the first Raptor 2 was spotted, marking the end of Raptor 1. After Raptor 2 production began, SpaceX stopped producing all of Raptor 1.5 engines. Compared to the original Raptor, Raptor 2 looks borderline incomplete. A large amount of plumbing and sensors have been removed, transitioning the engine from a Christmas tree look to a significantly cleaner look. On the original version of Raptor, while SpaceX was learning how to control the engine, a very large amount of development sensors were needed, allowing them to track pressure and temperature throughout Raptor's plumbing. Additionally, many valves were combined into valve plates, helping further simplify plumbing. By removing a large amount of these components, SpaceX has made the engine more flame and heat-proof, a clear step towards SpaceX's goal of removing all engine shrouding from the booster, which would decrease the booster's mass by six tons. This is a clear example of Musk's the best part is no part mantra. Reports suggest that SpaceX just conducted its most ambitious and powerful test to date with its Starship Mars rocket. The company ignited 14 Raptor engines on Booster 7, a prototype of Starship's first stage super heavy rocket, during a static fire test at Starbase, the company's South Texas facility. Static fires are common pre-flight trials in which a rocket's engines are briefly ignited while the vehicle stays anchored to the ground. And SpaceX is gearing up for a flight with Starship. The program's first orbital test mission, which apparently will involve Booster 7 and an upper stage prototype known as Ship 24. That landmark flight could launch before the end of the year. This static fire could be a big step toward the orbital liftoff. It doubled the previous highest number of Raptor engines that SpaceX had ignited during a Starship engine test. But there's still considerable work to do to demonstrate Booster 7's flight readiness. 
The vehicle boasts a whopping 33 Raptors. SpaceX is developing Starship to take people and cargo to the moon and Mars, as well as perform a variety of other spaceflight tasks. Starship prototypes have flown a handful of test flights to date, but none of them have gotten higher than about six miles in the sky, and none of them have involved a super heavy vehicle. SpaceX has already inked a number of customers for Starship, including NASA, which picked the vehicle as the first crewed lander for its Artemis program of moon exploration. If all goes according to plan, astronauts will touch down on the lunar surface in 2025 or 2026 aboard Starship on the Artemis 3 mission. Private customers have also signed up to ride Starship on missions around the moon. Billionaire Yusaku Maizawa booked an entire flight, for example, and space tourism pioneer Dennis Tito and his wife Akiko bought two seats on a different mission. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about NASA's detection of an object escaping a black hole. Do you think private space flights are a good idea? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.